I got a clip of you on CNN. They had one of those little, you know, panels where it's supposed to be real people who feel a certain way. They bring them in a room. They ask them questions. Well, anyway, here goes the clip. CNN, Van Jones. Watch it and weep. Battle for Pennsylvania. So it's a must win, right? President Trump won Pennsylvania by less than a percentage point last time around. And look, you got to pull it off this time, pretty much almost for sure. So how do voters there feel about him right now and those racist tweets? Van Jones was just there today, this morning, and he found out. Show of hands. Who voted for Donald Trump in 2016? Raise your hand. Two. So let me focus on you. Two, are you planning to vote for Donald Trump in 2020? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet whether I was going to vote for him or not. Uh, I am leaning uh, more towards him mm -hmm. than I am the other candidates right now. Uh, the economic situation for me and my business is going very well. So, that, you know, economics is a big, important issue here. Gotcha. And what about you? Yeah, I, I am. Um, all this kind of this far left talk is kind of scaring me when it comes to the border. So let's just address the elephant in the room. You're like a young black dude with tattoos and stuff. Why do you support Donald Trump, given some of his you know, racially inflammatory rhetoric? Yeah, well, I think, so. look, I mean, I was raised in a conservative family, um, and I'm in business. I'm a business consultant, um, and business is great. I don't want to lose that, you know? And I know that, you know, a lot of the, the rhetoric that comes out of the White House um, off Twitter um, is, is concerning, um, but putting personal... Um, feelings aside, um, I think that we're having a great economic boom. I mean, people are risking their lives to come here. How do you size up this whole thing where, he, where, where President Trump comes out and says uh, to these women, uh, go back to your whatever country you came from? Uh, it's a man in desperation. Hmm? He's, he's desperate. Desperate what? To, to be president, the only person he cares about is himself. He rode in on the coattails of Obama. If you think it was any other thing, you know, you believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. That's the way I see it. I don't believe in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. You know, almost everyone has a story of being told, go back to your country. Um, and I think that it's kind of like one of the oldest, you know, tricks in the book if you, when it comes to phraseology, um, maybe outside of the N-word, that, that comes to mind when you're talking about racist uh, language. I've had people when I moved into Pennsylvania said, oh, you're a New Yorker. Why don't you go back to New York where you belong? Well, you know, those are just human emotion remarks and people are frustrated. And they are frustrated. And he's frustrated from the very beginning. They have attacked him, his family, his wife, his kids. It, it, it's disgusting. It really is. I just go back to values. I value treating people with dignity. And if there's anything that is incongruent with those values, then I'm not for that. And so I'm not going to put profit over my values. You putting your profit over your values? That well, would be a yes. <coughs> Look, mm -hmm. I, I that think. That would be a yes. I think that this, this go back comment hit, hit a lot of us um, that support him. Um, it, it, it hit a lot of us in the gut, and I think that the president is putting a lot of us in a very precarious situation. I think the president has a base, and he has a far right-wing base, and there's a lot of white nationalists, a lot of racists, um, a lot of anti-Semites in that base. So what I'm going to do is I am going to have a PR strategy that is going to rile up the base. And so I feel like a lot of us feel like, wow, like where, where do we fit in you know, anymore? Do we, are we still welcome? Um, in this movement? Are, we still, are people of color still welcome? So a lot of us are, are still reeling from that comment. And I will tell you, a lot of my friends um, that are black conservatives, um, a lot of them have um, jumped off the Trump train. Um, they've gone over to Kamala Harris's side. They've, they've gotten involved in her campaign and also Joe Biden's, certainly here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Oh, that was an incredible conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's saying a lot of his friends have gotten off, not just conservative, right. onto, uh, not, not just off the Trump train, but onto someone onto else's other, train. Other things. But amazing that he's saying, I'm not sure if I'm welcome here and, mm -hmm. and if anyone of color is welcome, but he's still voting for him as of now. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think I understood until I got there the way this thing has landed like a bomb this, this, for those kinds of Trump voters. Trump voters who basically, he said, look, I'm a business guy. My business is going great. I don't want to change. I'm scared if we right. go- I'm an economic voter I'm an economic, voters, economic yeah. guy. I'm an economic guy, but I'm African-American. And, you know, this last round 
has pushed some of his fellow black conservatives away. And uh, so I think we got a lot going on here uh, in, in these swing states. I want to go back. Man, that's so embarrassing, man. <laughs> so let's start from the top. First guy says economics is what's driving him. Economics is driving him to support Donald Trump. He totally made excuses for Donald Trump. He's talking about Donald Trump is getting picked on in the press and people talk about him and his wife and his kids and his hair. Yeah. That doesn't mean you get to make racist comments to the world. You know, it's it's lame for people to try to feel sorry for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Obama's entire presidency, Donald Trump was going after Obama. I don't know how sad you felt for Obama having to deal with Donald Trump calling him birther, saying he wasn't American, saying he was born in another country, saying he probably didn't graduate from school, he got his degree from the mailbox or or whatever. Crazy was just crazy. And have you paid did you pay attention to all the stuff they said about Michelle Obama? They said she wasn't she was a man. Um did you see the artwork that was put out there, the racist artwork comparing Obama to apes and all of this stuff, the Obamas? I mean, it's horrific what they did. But, of course, our, our supporter here, all he sees is, you know, people giving Trump a hard time, and then he justifies it. I don't remember Obama making racist comments. I remember Obama telling white people to go back anywhere. If anything, he built over backwards to try to appease the white conservatives which is one of the reasons why a lot of progressives don't like Obama's presidency or weren't fond of his presidency. It was too too appeasatory, too capitulating to Republicans in order to create some type of weird coalition that obviously did not work. But anyway, then the next guy. Look, I think it's good for people to see a young black guy be just as bad as the old white guy. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'm disappointed in him. But hey, he's not a reflection of me. Any more than that old white guy's a reflection of you, older white guys who are watching. That young black guy who's up there making excuses for Donald Trump, the worst thing about it is he's not even deluding himself that Donald Trump isn't doing racist rhetoric. and race. He's he even defined it. He said Donald Trump's base is full of white nationalists, right, right, right wing, white nationalists, bigots, anti-Semites. And he's playing to those, that base. Be a yes. I think that this, this go bat comment hit, hit a lot of us um, that support him. Um, it, it, it hit a lot of us in the gut. And I think that the president is putting a lot of us in a very precarious situation. I think the president has a base, and he has a far right wing base. And there's a lot of white nationalists, a lot of racists, um, a lot of anti Semites in that base. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to have a PR strategy that is going to rile up the base. He knows. He's, he's, he's like, you know, he sees it. He's not, he's not denying what Donald Trump is doing, but he still supports it because at the end of the day, economically, he thinks it's going to be better for him. As if he controls anything that Donald Trump does. See, that type of thinking that somehow you supporting a Donald Trump is going to make your pockets tighter or it's going to make things easier for your business, dude, you, it's not. It's just not. You're going to succeed or you're not going to succeed. It's not going to come down to Donald Trump being in office. That's the way I've looked at it. I've been trying to make my business succeed. I'm not going to trade in all my values, as the sister pointed out. What'd she say? I just go back to values. I value treating people with dignity. And if there's anything that is incongruent with those values, then I'm not for that. And so I'm not going to put profit over my values. You putting your profit over your values? That well, would be a yes. Look, mm-hmm. I, I that think... That would be a yes. I'm not going to trade my values in for profits. Yeah, that's because you have ethics. Once again, I'm very glad to see that you got an older white guy, look like you got 20 years on the young black guy, maybe more, and they both had the same mentality. Overlook it, right, because it's advantageous. The older white guy gave excuses. 
because he don't want to be seen as racist. Black guy didn't even give excuses. He just, I'm a sellout. That's right, I'm a sellout, and I'm, that's the way it is. I, I'm going to support him anyway because my money is going to help my money. And that is low. It's real low, guys. At least the white guy may be delusional. The black guy's not delusional. It's good for you to see it, guys. It's good for you to see it up close and personal. Almost everyone has a story of being told, go back to your country. Um, and I think that it's kind of like one of the oldest, you know, tricks in the book if you, when it comes to phraseology, um, maybe outside of the N-word, that, that comes to mind when you're talking about racist uh, language. There it is, right there. She said it. It's, it's reality. It's what I said as well. It's just what it is. And to people try to pretend that Trump meant it another way. <laughs> yeah, he may have meant it another way for you, but the people he's talking to know exactly what he's trying to say. When are we just going to admit? See, that's when, when people say Trump brings out the racist, he talks to him. Trump doesn't use like coded language that's what that was it's like a telling your dog sick him sick him dog sick him what does sick him mean ah 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 you sick the dog on you you dumb ass the young man ended by saying that he feels like uh, there's a number of black conservatives I guess he felt somewhat a dilemma of conscience <laughs> and incongruity right because the sister called him out on it. Hey, you're taking your, you're picking profit over your values. And then Van Jones called him out on this. Then he had to capitulate. Like, well, you know, guys, uh, well, you know, me and my, you know, a lot of our conservative friends are, are changing. Uh, you know, this whole go back to where you came from line hit us pretty hard. And some of us feel really bad about it. Almost so bad. We're going to go vote for Kamala Harris, who's basically a neoliberal. But at least she brown. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Or Joe Biden. <sighs> it's sad. It's really sad. Look, CNN, man, you have you have the ability to choose people that will tick us off. I know you do it strategically. You must do it strategically. Um, I, I, oh, the editing is mwah, fantastic to get just the type of comments that makes people go, what the hell is wrong with America? What's wrong with these people? Um, thank you for having those two ladies on that forum. And that guy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. What about the older white guy who called it all out just before we go? Where, where President Trump comes out and says, uh, to these women, uh, go back to your, whatever country you came from. Uh, it's a man in desperation. Hmm? He's, he's desperate. Desperate what? To, to be president. The only person he cares about is himself. He rode in on the coattails of Obama. If you think it was any other thing, you know, you believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. That's the way I see it. I don't believe in the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus. Oh, my God. He said... Trump inherited, inherited this from Obama. And he did. It was on an upswing before he got in there. The economy was going, to, was going the right way. Trump may deserve credit for not screwing it up, but it was already going that way. So I appreciate him keeping the real on that. But yeah, Trump giving tax breaks to the biggest corporations that helps other businesses who do business with those corporations. Just so happens that all Americans do business with corporations. Some of us have a job. And if those corporations don't pass those those profits from or those savings on to their employees, well, then you're not going to see it, any benefit from these guys getting tax breaks. That's the problem. That's the problem. All right. Well, look, guys, tomorrow is Freedom Friday. That's when you get to call up and you get to voice your opinion on any issue uh, that you want to talk about. It's great. Uh, you'll be able to call up and talk about the CNN episode or talk about Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard or Andrew Yang or Amy Klobuchar. Hell, you can even talk about Cory Booker or John Delaney if you feel it. If you feel the need to sound off about Kamala Harris, do that too. Be here not tomorrow, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The phone lines will be open, and so will the dialogue. I appreciate you guys. Be here.